Hey there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be going over how to write an FRQ. This video is going to help you better understand exactly how to tackle these challenging questions. What you should do when you first open up that test and you see the question, how you should approach it, and most importantly, how you should answer these questions. Now in order to respect your time and to keep this video a little shorter, I'm going to be typing this FRQ and you're going to see my thought process as I go through. The best way to do this is for you to see me go through a real FRQ. So we're going to be using the 2018 national exam. Okay, so right away we'll notice that this FRQ has a stimulus component. And we're good geographers. We know that when we have a stimulus component, any data that's provided with the FRQ, we need to then look at that first. So right away I can see I'm looking at a chloropleth map. I can see this map is dealing with the percent of women in the labor force who are working in agriculture. I could go down to our legend and see, okay, here's our different ranges. I can right away notice Africa has more countries than other parts of the world that are in that 76 to 98% range. That's interesting to note. A lot of the developed world is in that zero to 25%. Okay, so we're starting to see some things going on in the data. We could also see our sources from the UN. So we've spent a little time looking at our data. The next thing to do is go into kind of the prompt part of the question. So now we're going down here. We have women composed between one third and one half of all agricultural laborers in developing countries. And yet empowerment and gender equality have been difficult to achieve. So when I'm reading this, right away a couple things stick out. One, women. Now, this sticks out to me because after reviewing my map, I know that the map's showing me information about women, and it's also showing them in the agricultural sector of the economy. So I'm also going to highlight this. These two things are sticking out to me. Now, another thing that's kind of on my mind after reading this is we're talking here mainly about developing countries. So on a test, these are some things you might want to underline. So when you are going into the actual question part, which we'll be answering, you kind of have these ideas in your mind. Already, I'm trying to like gauge what am I looking at and how am I going to perceive this information? What am I going to connect to? The last part would probably be this gender equality. That seems to be another theme that we're going to be looking at. So this is just some of the prep work you could do before you even get down to answering A, B, or C. This way we kind of know what we're talking about before we even get into the question. Okay, so now we're answering the question. We've done the prep work. We have an idea of what we're going to be talking about. And now we're getting into A. And right away I can notice this is an identify question. Remember back to my task verb video where we talked about exactly what you should do for all the different task verbs identify, I only need about one sentence of an answer. So right away, that's on my mind. And I can see A says, identify a country where more than 75% of women are in the labor force. This is the big part for me that's sticking out for A. And they're active in agriculture. So I know, okay, I'm going to go up to my map here, and I'm going to be picking a country that has to have more than 75%. So it has to be then in this top category. And this is another key component. It is more. So that should stick out to you because that means we cannot use the 51 to 75% range. And again, I have these pre-typed so that way it speeds up the video. A perfect answer for A could be one country that has more than 75% of the women population in the field of agriculture would be Madagascar. We can clearly see Madagascar is in that 76 to 98%. That answers the question. We can now move on to B. Again, remember, identify answers should be short. Now we're moving on to B. Now, when we read B, we can see that B is asking us for each of the following three categories. So right away, in my mind, I'm seeing this three. So this is telling me, hey, there's going to be three different parts to your answer. That's going to be important. Describe, and I'm going to stop one more time again here. This is now our task verb. This is telling me what I am supposed to be doing as a student. So that's important for me to understand. One obstacle that may prevent women working in agriculture from achieving greater equality and empowerment. So this is connecting back up to our prompt, that second part here. And the big thing here now is also we're talking about obstacles. And I only have to provide one. So that's important for me to understand. So these three things I'm kind of highlighting here. I guess you could also underline women working in agriculture. And we could also get the greater equality and empowerment because that's a big part of this question. So we can see we have economic, cultural, and political. So let's start actually just with economic and then we'll move from there. Now, before I put up my answer for economic, I want to make sure you realize that there's multiple ways you could answer this prompt. 
I'm just going to give one answer for each of them. Now, for economic, what I came up with was oftentimes women are denied opportunities in the workforce due to a lack of formal education. This prevents them from having the skills needed to advance in the workforce, thus forcing them to do household work or stay in agricultural professions. Now, what I want you to notice here, how I worded this is I'm talking about formal education originally. I'm talking about going to school. And this could be a cultural thing. However, I'm connecting it into advancing in the workforce. So I have to make sure I'm giving an economic reason. The theme here, the topic here is economics. So I need to connect that back into the workforce. And then I end it by saying, because they don't have education, then they can't get the skills they needed to move up in the workforce. And because of all of this, it forces them to only have opportunities at home or in agriculture. So everything connects back to that economic theme. Next, we can see that B is asking for a cultural obstacle. So for here, I actually came up with women in countries that have agricultural-based economies often are less developed in the demographic transition model and are more prone to viewing women as caretakers. Oftentimes, putting traditional gender roles on women prevents them from advancing in society. So originally, I talked about some economics again. Here, though, remember, we have to talk about cultural components. That's what this second bullet point in B is asking us for. So I reference the demographic transition model, connecting to multiple units, but then I finish by connecting it back to that cultural component, showing that because they're not as economically developed and they're not as far in the demographic transition model, that more stereotypes are being put on women. And that is preventing them from advancing because they are seen under the traditional gender roles. So I've connected it back to that cultural component. And that's important to remember. Now, the last part of B, we can see it's talking about a political obstacle. So for a political obstacle, I came up with the following. And actually, real quick before we do this, I've noticed my labeling here. I want to make sure that it is kind of correct. One thing when you're taking an FRQ that's going to be important, make sure you are clearly identifying where your answers connect to. So when someone's reading this, they can say, hey, here's my answer A. Here's my answers for B. Now, the reason why we do this is because that way, when someone is grading our test, they know exactly what we're answering. They know what goes to what question. So they don't have any confusion and we don't lose points because they didn't know where our answers were. All right. So for my political component, I have politically, we can see obstacles to women empowerment in the form of unequal laws. This takes place in the form of preventing women from voting, owning land, or providing access to women to escape impoverished conditions. So everything here, I actually provided multiple kind of examples, but it all connects back to the legal side. And again, it's all political. That's what the question's asking. So I have to make sure my answer is providing a political answer. And again, I'm talking about an obstacle here. I'm talking about obstacles women face in achieving that greater equality and empowerment. So I've answered all the components now of B, economic, cultural, and political. All right, we're on to the last part of this question, and it's C. So let's read through C, and then we're going to point out a couple things. Identify and explain one impact of empowering women within rural agricultural regions of developing countries. So right off the bat, you should notice that there are two task verbs in C. I have identify and I also have explain. So my answer is going to have a couple different parts to it. I'm going to have some layers that we're going to be using. We can also see that we're talking about empowering women. Now, in the last one for B, we were talking about obstacles that prevented empowerment. Now we're talking about in the impact of empowering women. And the other thing is that we're talking about developing countries. We can also look at the rural re agricultural regions. So this is important to note. In my other video where we talked about different tips, I told you never skim questions. This is where students actually lose points sometimes. They'll be reading this, they see identify and explain what impacts of empowering women in rural agricultural regions, and then they go and answer. And they miss the developing countries. And their answer will talk about the developed world. This is not correct. You have to talk about the developing countries, the question specifically asking for it. So that's why I kind of highlight stuff as I read it. So that way I know what to focus on. And I encourage you to do the same. Use a pen, write an underline on these prompts so that way you know exactly what you're answering. 
So for C, I came up with the following answer. We can see that I have, when women in the developing world are empowered and given more rights, we start to see society become more economically advanced. This is because women are allowed to participate in the economy, take out loans, start businesses, and go to school. This allows for new innovation and more competitive workforce. This will also reduce the TFR of a country, which in turn reduces the NRI, allowing for a more stable population growth. This is because women are allowed to participate in society and are no longer just seen as child bears. Notice, I put in more of an explanation here. That's because of the explained task verb. I made sure to provide specifics and to fully elaborate on my point. By doing this, whoever would be grading my test would be able to see that, okay, he's talking about an economic impact of empowering women. And I'm connecting into the developing countries by referencing things that are happening for countries earlier in that demographic transition model that are developing a high TFR, a high NIR. And so by increasing the economic opportunities, I'm actually showing, hey, when this happens, we're going to start to see changes in our population growth, the economy. All of this is because our gender roles are starting to transform from this one economic thing by allowing more empowerment and giving women more rights. So I've fully explained my point and I have showed I have a holistic understanding of it. I didn't just identify it. I didn't just write down this is what will happen. I showed the entire kind of process and what would occur after giving women more opportunities in society. And that's it. Hopefully this video helps you better understand how to tackle some of these challenging questions. They don't need to be as hard as some students find them to be. The more you can practice them, the better you're going to get at it. If you're really struggling with FRQs in your class or you're worried about the national exam, make sure you Google some FRQs and practice them yourself. That way you can be more comfortable with it. And if you're struggling with the task verbs or other aspects of the FRQs, check out some of my videos on YouTube. That'll help you get more practice with them. Or check out that ultimate review review packet. There's a ton of stuff in there that'll help you review for your tests in your class and at the end of the year. All right, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, geographers, I'll see you online.